guys, how's it going? Today's video is a hanging basket care guide. So this is actually part three of our hanging basket series. In the first two videos, I talked more about if you were to plant up your hanging basket yourself. So I talked about the different styles of hanging baskets, what sizes to be looking for, how many plants to plant in what size of hanging basket, and which plants are compatible growing together. So if you're interested in watching those, we will link them down below, definitely check those out. But in this one, I want to talk about if you already have your basket planted or purchased, what you need to do to have the most success with it. So right around this time of year, the month of May is the most popular month to either be buying our hanging baskets, receiving them as gifts, maybe you just got one for Mother's Day, or maybe you're giving a hanging basket for Mother's Day and wanna impart a little care wisdom. That is what this video is all about. And it really comes down to three categories watering, fertilizing, and maintenance. So let's tackle watering first because that is the very most important thing to the health of your hanging basket. So you wanna make sure that your hanging basket has a drainage hole. And I can't imagine you would find a pre-planted hanging basket that didn't have one, but I have seen baskets for sale that you can fill up yourself with your own plants that have a plastic liner with no hole for drainage. So just double check, look under your basket, make sure there's a hole for water to drain so your plants don't rot. And then when you're putting out your hanging baskets early in the season, when the night temperatures are still pretty cool and our days aren't getting really, really hot yet, you might get away with only watering every other day or every two days. Uh, it just kind of depends on your area. It depends on what your weather is like. If it's really windy, I usually like to make it a habit of checking my hanging basket every single day, no matter what time of year it is. And then once the uh, days start getting really warm, you'll start having to water once a day, if not twice a day. Here in our area, we get over 100 degrees for at least a month at a time in the summer. Um, those days we have to water twice a day to keep our plants happy. And better yet, if you have the ability to set up any of your containers or hanging baskets up on a drip system, that is the best way to go because it takes away so much of the work from you and it gives the planters consistent water, which is what they thrive on. And you can get kits. I did bring the box. I forgot to put it on the table. So this is called a WaterWise kit and it comes with everything that you need to set up several containers on a drip system. You can even put a timer uh, between your hose bib and your drip system so that it'll go off every day at the same time. If you decide to not go with a drip system, you just wanna make sure to be consistent. Consistency with the watering is key. Um, you don't wanna skip any days when it's really warm out. If you're going on vacation, make sure you have somebody coming over to water your plants for you. And if you choose a time of day, you wanna stick with that time. So if you're gonna water in the mornings, make sure to water every morning. Instead of watering one morning and then waiting until the next evening to water, that might be too long and your planter may have dried out by that point if it's really hot. Also consider the size of your hanging basket. If you choose a 12 inch hanging basket versus an 18 inch hanging basket, that 12 inch basket's gonna just dry out so much faster. So just keep that in mind when you're picking out your hanging basket. The second category is fertilizing. This is second to most important to watering, but I would say in hanging baskets, it's almost as important because the reservoirs of hanging baskets, the soil that you have in there is just not very much. And the only nutrients that these plants are getting is basically what you give them throughout the season. So what I like to do when I very first get my hanging basket I put in some slow release fertilizer, which is this right here. You can just kind of scatter it right on top of the soil. You just kind of want to spread the plants apart, kind of drop some in there, and that'll just provide a really slow release of fertilizer for several weeks. And then I still water with a water soluble fertilizer, which is this one right here on a weekly basis. And the way you do that is super easy. So inside the bucket, there is a measuring spoon and you put one tablespoon of the fertilizer in one gallon of water in your watering can and you wanna mix it up really well so you make sure that the fertilizer has dissolved in the water and then you just water your plants with that. And you wanna make sure to put an alarm in your phone once a week to make sure to do that. And you might do it extra if you get a really heavy rain um, that can really wash a lot of nutrients out of the soil. So you might want to fertilize right after that as well. And the third category is maintenance. And what I mean by that is deadheading and trimming. So there are some varieties of flowers like geraniums that no matter what variety you get, you do need to deadhead them. And I see them oftentimes planted as a centerpiece plant in a hanging basket. So every week or two, you may need to go in and pop off any spent bloom heads to make them look clean and fresh. But I would recommend looking for varieties of flowers that are self-cleaning. So super tunia, super bell, super bina, those things that you never have to touch and they'll keep on blooming. And oftentimes you can look inside a container and you'll see tags of what's planted in that container. Like in this one, we've got Supertunia Royal Magenta, Supertunia Mulberry Charm. 
I know both of these varieties are self-cleaning, so I don't have to do any maintenance that way. You might find a tag kind of connected right up here. So just do a little look in before you buy your hanging basket. And the last part of the maintenance category is trimming. And this is something that I think uh, a lot of people, including myself, have a hard time doing. So mid-season, our hanging baskets might be, you know, really grown in, they might be really full, but they're starting to look a little bit straggly in terms of blooms. They've got some low growing branches that don't look very good. You can go in with your pruners or your scissors and trim all of that growth right up to about level with the bottom of your hanging basket. And what that will do is give your plant a recharge. It'll send a bunch more energy into being able to produce new branches and new blooms. You may sacrifice a few little low growing blooms at the end of some straggly branches, but in about a week or two, you'll have a super full, beautiful planter again. And you can do that multiple times during the season. Usually I have to do it once or twice to my hanging baskets. And you don't have to take them up that drastically either. If you've got a super full hanging basket with just a little straggly growth on the bottom, you can just take a few inches off if you want. But anything like that, any trimming, really does recharge the plant. So that's it, you guys. That is my care guide on hanging baskets and how to have the most success with them so you can enjoy them all throughout the season. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please share it with a friend who you think might benefit from it. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.